How are you guys doing? You okay? Champions League today? Ready? Feeling good? I'm not. Been drawn against Liverpool. I'm sick of playing Liverpool for... Oh God. If we lose to them like we did in the cup final, I'm not going to handle this well. It's the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Welcome back to Newcastle. Yes, folks, how is it going? I hope you're doing well. Today is episode number 33 of our Newcastle Let's Play. I almost said Football Manager Beta Let's Play. I mean, it started in the beta. Does that make it still a beta Let's Play? We're in the full game now. It's been out for like two weeks. This is a weird tangent to go on. Today, we've got Champions League football. And as you've already heard, Liverpool again. Yes, I feel like we constantly get drawn against English teams in European competitions. It's not very fair because I feel like the English teams are usually pretty good. Looking at the league table, it's fair to say that Liverpool are our main rivals. Only two points behind us, although we do have a game in hand. We're not going to be focusing on the league today. Um, I'm scared of them though. So it would be very nice today to get a win against them. As I mentioned, it is the Champions League quarterfinals. But since we're last here, a couple of games played, of course... Last time out, a bit of an episode to forget. But the good news is we have come back strong and we came back, well, with a very, very good response against Arsenal. A 3-0 win, a dominant display, Adiemi with two, Sesko with a goal as well. Played a bit of a rotated team, mixed and matched things a little. Good to see Ramsdale have a good performance after his previous calamity. And most recently, just four days ago, we clashed against Bournemouth. A team in the relegation zone, we should be beating them convincingly. We did beat them convincingly. Really, really nice as well to see Ransford Yeboah uh, have a man of the match display in this game. Two goals and an assist. Of course, we recalled him in January after a reasonable loan spell at Ajax. And so far, he's kind of doing the business for us as a bit of a super sub, a bit of a, a plan B. Uh, yeah, I've liked what he's offered us, albeit as kind of a fourth slash fifth choice striker. Now, before we get into the game today, I think it's always nice to look at the Next Gen Award in Football Manager, especially when it features so many of our players. Uh, for those of you who haven't been playing FM22 or haven't got to March in FM22, at the end of March, the Next Gen Award is kind of given out, and basically the top 50 wonder kids in the world are ranked. We have a fair few players in this list, including Johansson in at number three, of course, already at the club. Alongside him, Paul. Also doing very well. I feel like Peter Paul, of course, the left, uh, sorry, the right back we brought in, and Harwood, the left back we brought in, both young English players, haven't developed quite as much as I would like this year. But we've been trying to give them odds and ends of first team football, although they have been playing a lot of kind of games for the youth team. As you can see in Andy's case here, 30 matches he's played for kind of the under 23s. But the development's been maybe a tiny bit concerning in these players. Slightly reassuring, though, to see them in this countdown. Elsewhere, Reynoso, remember him, the headband yesterday? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you miss me dressing up as this guy. It was a lovely sight. In the most recent international break, he got called up and played for Mexico. He fe featured at number two in this award. The number one player is also a Mexican player playing for America, who I've made a bid on, kind of based entirely on the fact he won the award. And also, he's got five goals in six caps. You can see here, we've given him a scout report. He looks pretty good. He's fast. He's good in the air. He's 18 years old. I like the look of him a lot. He's got 17 goals this year in Mexico. I'm trying to sign him for 9.5 million. I don't have 9.5 million, but I think, and I might be wrong here, so this could be very awkward, but I think we can sign him using the funds from next season's transfer budget because he won't join us till next year. If I'm wrong... I'm going to have to cancel the bid, and it's going to be very embarrassing. Um, kind of wish I hadn't mentioned that he existed. Worth noting, we did have a couple of other players in the top 50. Uh, Al Anezi, the Saudi youngster, featured in it, which was really cool to see, as did Mian Tudila. Uh, can you remember this guy? Signed him on a free because everyone else wanted him. Plays on the wing. We don't use wingers. Yeah, apparently he's quite good. I mean, he looks reasonably good as well. His value's nice and high for a player we signed on a free just 12 months ago. The other player who features here, this is a weird one. Um, it is a guy called Neil Morgan. Now, he came through my youth intakes two years ago. I have no recollection of noticing this guy and thinking he was good. I feel a little bit embarrassed that it took him to pop up in this news inbox item for me to realise he existed. I mean, if we look at his development over the last kind of few years, he has developed stupendously. I mean, it is actually ridiculous how much he has improved over a really prolonged period of time. I do feel like starting with last year in Football Manager, you occasionally got youngsters who your head of youth development and also your coaching staff wouldn't really rate particularly highly when they came in there at kind of intake class, but yet they could develop like this and kind of come out from nowhere. Neil Morgan, 
one of those players. He looks phenomenal to the point where I'm trying to work out where we're going to play him in the team. Right now, I'm training him as an attacking midfielder to play as an advanced playmaker. But yeah, we might actually have a good player in our intakes after all, after all my years of complaining. So uh, yeah, watch this space. But as lovely as it is to admire all our young players, we've got to get our head in the game today. These are two tricky games against Liverpool. The first one at home, I'm hoping we can build a really good platform to build off going into the second leg. In terms of the team news, a little bit of team news. Godfrey, of course, still out with his broken foot. But Alfonso Davies has got a sports hernia. He is going to miss the best part of a month. That is a blessing and a curse in a weird way because it means that the dinghy or Dean is back in the team. Yeah, the 31-year-old Frenchman, of course, a core part of the team last year. To be honest, this year he's been just as good when we've called upon him, be that at left back or left centre back. He's coming into the team today. Hopefully, he is going to be able to do the business for us. I really, really like what he brings to the team. He gets a start here and he's going to get an extended run in the kind of first team as we head into the crunch time of this season. Um, yeah, hopefully he's going to live up to all this kind of hype I'm giving him. Elsewhere, Yusuf Demir today, I'm going to start on the bench. That means that Havertz, Calvert-Lewin and Adiemi form our front three. It's a traditional centre mid pairing of Bellingham and Rice. The rest of the team, the team that you know and love. Tamori back from injury, looking good, back in the England setup as well. Um, really, really happy with how he's slotted back into the team since his long-term injury. And he is kind of the final piece of the puzzle here. This is a team that even with the Alfonso Davies injury, are back to beat Liverpool. I realise based off yesterday's episode, um, we, like talk is cheap. I've got to do some talking on the pitch. Uh, is that the phrase? Talking on the pitch? Showing on the pitch? We've done our talking. Now we need to show it on the pitch. I don't know where I'm going with this. Basically, we need to play better today. Let's go see if we can make it happen. Okay, let's get into this one. I am a little bit nervous for this. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is because we beat Arsenal in the FA Cup, that was uh, that 3-0 win that we had since we were last here, we have got to the semi-final. That immediately follows on from the quarter-final second leg. We won't be covering that today. We've been drawn against Manchester United for the semi-final. I don't know about anyone else. I'm sick of playing Manchester United as Newcastle manager. So unless we crash out of the Champions League... And the FA Cup becomes this big, important trophy. Kind of just going to put that on the back burner. I mean, hopefully we're going to be defending our Champions League title for a little longer than the quarterfinals. That said, this draw could have been a lot, lot kinder to us. Anyway, we have an early highlight here. Things we love to see. We're in possession. Bellingham through the middle. Calvert-Lewin carving them open. He's wanted by Jurgen Klopp, is Calvert-Lewin. He's been stalked by him for the last few months. And now he's fluffed his lines. I can't work out if he's sucking up to Klopp by missing intentionally, or maybe he's trying to throw Liverpool off the scent by playing badly, so they won't want to sign him. I would rather he score, to be honest. And look, we're still on the attack. Let's remain positive. He has time to turn his form around. That, if it's onside, is a biblical goal by Adiemi. He's doing a bloody cartwheel. The ref's gone to VAR. He is celebrating far too much for it not to be given now, and it is going to be given. And well, maybe today we've turned a corner. Maybe yesterday was an off day. Gavardiol, the ball across was sensational. The finish on the volley by Adiemi is just stupendous. It's tasty. Very, very tasty. We're a goal up. It's the dream start. Let's go. Okay, we've got a long throw from Joe Gomez to defend here. These scare me. But Fafana's going to head it away initially. Still might, might be more danger to deal with here. Fabinho, who of course scored in that infamous uh, League Cup final. He is on the pitch. Hopefully we're going to be able to mark him better from set pieces today. Fabinho, Odegaard, Joe Gomez. Is Joe Gomez playing left back or is he just there from the throw-in position? I'm, I am very concerned if he's playing left back for Liverpool. Rendal plays it in. Salah, options in the middle. Fatty's there. I mean, that was a really nice goal, wasn't it? They passed it around nicely. They cut us open at the back. Apparently Ramsdale was beaten far too easily at the near post. I feel like as soon as you give Ansu Fatty the ball in the six-yard box unmarked to have an uncontested shot on goal. You can't really blame the goalkeeper anymore. Right? I mean, there's no... I, I'm not, I'm not going to blame Ramsdale for that. Maybe I'm a Ramsdale apologist. I think it's just mental to expect him to stop that. Anyway, can we respond immediately? Calvert-Lewin, show us what you're made of. You've hit the woodwork already. He's going to give it to the dinghy, who doesn't put in the best ball into the box. But Liveramento can deliver, and does so. Calvert-Lewin, Toluca Dean hits the crossbar comes to Liveramento, who is onside. Oh, it's a rare opportunity where Luca Dean gets the ball like that in the box. It was a lovely nod down by Calvert-Lewin. 
I mean, Liverpool might launch the counter-attack here. They have got men swarming forward. Brozovic on the ball, gives it back to Ansu Fati. Of course, signed for over £100 million by Liverpool in the summer. Tamori, though, intelligent, calm, composed defending. Nods it back to the keeper, and we live to fight another day. And well, that another day has come straight away. This is a relentless experience. We are less than halfway through the first half. And yet we're on, I don't know how many highlights we've had. I've lost count. I can only count to four, but it's at least five. Rafa Liao on the far side for Liverpool. Brozovic. This is a very different look Liverpool team. With the likes of Brozovic, Odegaard, Ansu Fati. And Joe Gomez at left back. He definitely is playing left back. I feel uncomfortable. Liverpool trying to play this patient play and carve us open. And oh my word, Ramsdale, what a stop that was. Mo Salah clean through on goal. Look destined to score, but the keeper has dealt with that. Still might be more to deal with here, though. And Bellingham gets away from danger. And I want to shout to man more. Let me shout it from the rooftops. Ten minutes left of this half. I feel like there's got to be another highlight here based on what we've seen so far. Or, you know, maybe there's not. Maybe I've just jinxed it. No more highlights to end the half. It was a pretty crazy opening to the game. We had a lot of opportunities prior to scoring. We've hit the woodwork. We've probably been the better team here. Liverpool have really been limited in their opportunities. In the second half of the first half, whilst we didn't see a load of highlights, we were having the better of the play. We were still creating chances. I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy. I really want to demand something from them here. Um, you know what? You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna put my hands together and tell the strikers that they weren't bad, but they can do better. Does anyone else do the actual gestures in Football Manager? I always kind of forget they exist. I feel like they don't change enough. So it feels rude to point. Why would I want to point at my players and tell them stuff if I can just stand there and say it like a normal human? Anyway, 27 minutes left in this game. This game had a crazy start. It's starting to fizzle out. Calvert-Lewin's not having the best of games. I am going to bring in Sesko. Elsewhere, Havertz has not covered himself in glory. I'm bringing in Demir. Some big guns coming onto the pitch up top. And now Luca Dean's injured. I mean, if that's long term, we have problems at left back. Um, Right, and Babu, you are going to come in and play right back. Liveramento is going to have to play left wing back. I mean, Alfonso's out for a month. Luca Dean could be out now. If that's long term, we are in deep doggy doo doo. And I'm concerned. Okay, a bit of a shuffle at the back. We don't normally play Liveramento at left wing back, but it's kind of needs must at this point. He always has been my third choice left back, but we've never really been in this scenario before. I mean, on the balance of play, I'm disappointed we've not been able to create more, although there could be a gift here. Adiemi, all on his lonesome, hits it from range. For a second, I thought it was in the back of the net. It's gone just wide of the post. There's 10 minutes left here. We've made all our subs. I really don't want to change anything. We've been the better team in this game. Given the fact we're at home, this feels like a rare chance to make something happen. And Babu goes for a spontaneous long throw, and oh my word, Yusuf Demir's just hit the crossbar. We've had so many chances in this game. There's only a couple of minutes left here. Four minutes of added time. Is there any late twist here? I feel like this could be a game we look back on as a missed opportunity. We created a lot. 21 shots, an XG of 1.77. In the second half, Liverpool had one shot. It was all one-way traffic. I didn't really want to change anything because we were playing so well. But we never managed to get that breakthrough, and that is the kind of result that leaves me nervous for a second leg going to Anfield. Because you have to expect Liverpool are going to play better than that with the players that they have at their disposal. And it's bad news. Luca Dean is out for three to four weeks. If we just look at our squad depth, <laughs> this is uh, concerning. I mean, Liveramento can come in and play left wing back, I suppose. The other option would be Harwood, but... Harwood isn't registered for the Champions League because I didn't expect to have so many injuries to one position. Ah, I mean, we've got Wolves in three days and then Liverpool in a week's time. We have to go collect our heads, rotate our team. Squad management is going to be critical to end the year here. Hopefully, in six days' time, we're going to be ready for a trip to Anfield. But based on what I've seen there, based on the injuries we've got, I am pretty apprehensive for the second game today. Okay, folks, we are back. Game number two. How did we get on in midweek? We lost. We lost to Wolves. And the worst thing is, whilst I did rotate the team a little bit, it was still a bloody strong team that was on display here. We lost 2-0 at Molyneux. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, the only silver lining in all of this is Liverpool did end up drawing away against Leicester. That said... 
We're only a point ahead of them, and whilst we have a game in hand, based on recent form, that really means absolutely nothing. We are bad at the moment. What I would say, if we're looking for a small positive, Wolves are in eighth, so they are an okay team, and I did rotate the team to play them. If we don't win now at Anfield, like, the entire month of April and March is just perhaps the worst run of form we've had as manager of Newcastle. We've never really had a run as bad as this. I feel like the next two games are an opportunity to set the record straight or to just accept that we're just a failure this year. So when it comes to team news, just as a reminder, Davies is injured, Luca Dean is injured, Harwood could not be registered. That means that Livramento is going to start at left back uh, for this game at Anfield. And it means that Arian B is the last remaining alternative at left wing back. One of three homegrown at club players we have. Um, you are actually allowed to have four of them in a Champions League squad of 25 players. I only have three homegrown at club players because Musiala left. So that is why we have a squad of 24. That's also why a few of these players down here can't be registered. It's just the rules. We have to abide by them. Um, and when you have injuries like this to just a defence in a very focused way, it can be a little bit problematic. Besides that, though, the team is a very, very good team. Calvert-Lewin, I've been a bit miffed with lately. I'm going to make the bold call to bring in Calvert-Lewin. I also realise I've set it up like we've got a Premier League game. We haven't. We're only allowed seven subs. So because we can only have seven subs, I've moved Livakovic and Taliso off. Ransford, Yeboa, Sesko, Calvert-Lewin. We've got firepower on the bench. Also, if I remember correctly, Adiemi is a pretty good pressing forward. Well, be better than Demir, I guess we should say. I will say, Demir, since he's joined the club, has been improving quite a lot. On the pitch... I mean, we've spent £144 million. We expect fireworks. Three goals, two assists, one player of the match. Maybe not quite fireworks, although three of those appearances have been on off the bench. Of course, he scored in that Carabao Cup final. I've got a feeling he's going to play a role today. I do question if I'm saying that more out of hope than genuine expectation. Um, but it's the hope that keeps you going. It's 1-1 after the first leg. We are going to Anfield here. And... I am nervous. I am nervous. We have just not been good enough. Looking at the Liverpool team, Fatty, Salah, Rafa Leal down the middle. It's a fairly standard team as far as their selection goes. As for our own, I mean, it's a very strong 11. It's a little bit makeshift in the wing-back areas. Oh, I'm, I'm just, please, football manager God, just bail me out today. Don't make me look like a noob. I say that and then in 30 seconds... Uh, well, into the game, there's immediately a highlight. Please don't make me look like a noob. I feel like the last few episodes, I've not covered myself in glory. This was meant to be the episode where I redeem myself as a manager. I show that I'm not a bottler. And, well, I'm not overly convinced we've achieved that so far, as Virgil van Dijk steps out of defence with the ball. I feel like if Liverpool get an early goal here, we have to start panicking. Ansu Fati pulls it back. Odegaard, it's blocked. It's blocked again. Get it a bloody away from goal. Oh my word, we are living life dangerously. Thierry Rendal, running down the line, the highlight just ends. It's nil-nil, we're fine, I'm fine, I'm concerned, I am concerned. Tomori's picked up an early book booking too, it gets worse. Rafael Brozovic plays it to Fatty, who scores his 20th goal of the season. I hate Liverpool Football Club, I hate Liverpool Football Club in this save game. They are just a thorn in my side. A pain in the arse. They beat us to the Premier League title last year. And after we beat them in last year's Champions League final, after the success we've had this year, we've really struggled against them since we beat them in the Community Shield. That said, we've got a free kick. Yusuf Demir is going to be the man over it. He scored against them from before from this kind of position. Can he do it again? He can't. Alison Becker makes a good stop, turns it around the post. But a reason for optimism. Yusuf Demir's wand of a left foot, and while he's going to try and set it up for the near post there, it's cleared away. Half an hour into this game, we have a set piece to deal with. Liverpool scored one of these against us in the cup final. On this occasion, Ramsdale makes a really, really big stop. I have not liked what I've seen from our team thus far in this game. I'm thinking about how I might want to change things here. And I feel like, and this, this might be the wrong attitude to have, I feel like we don't need three centre-backs against their one forward. So I'm going to make a change. I'm going to change up the midfield slightly. This is a bold call to make this early, I realise. I'm going to bring in Declan Rice to play at defensive mid. Then I'm going to play Bellingham 
and Havertz alongside each other and Demir at centre attack in mid. Now, I'm going to play Havertz as a box-to-box -box midfielder. A few episodes ago, I talked about the fact that I thought Havertz was a good box-to-box -box midfielder. For context, talking about in-football manager. He's pretty bloody good at this role, especially with a defensive midfielder alongside him. And, uh, well, that's where he's going to play for us today. We're going to go Bellingham, Havertz, Demir in the middle, Adiemi, Calvert-Lewin up front. This is, this is more attacking than we've ever done before. And also, we're going to push the tempo up. You know what? No more Mr. Nice Guy. We're going to crank up the pressure, up the tempo, just trying to crowd out the midfield a little bit more. I feel like without a defensive midfielder, they are just finding lots of gaps in our defence. And equally, I feel like our three defenders are a little bit redundant against their frontman. Andy Emmy, through on goal, scores. The tactical change hasn't kicked in yet. I have a big decision now. Do I stick with what we were doing? Or do I stick with this change? And you know what? I'm sticking with this change. Kai Havertz gets the assist. Adiemi scores. That isn't going to see me shift my game plan. Adiemi, by the way, great run. Just found a channel of space between the right back and right centre back. Really nice finish as well for his 41st goal of the year. Maybe Alisson could have done a little bit better. We're not going to complain. Football manager is going to ask me, do I want to proceed with these changes? This is a critical moment. I've hit yes. And we're straight into a highlight here. Virgil van Dijk clearing it away to Bellingham. Havertz with the ball. Fafana. You could make an argument here that with Tomori off the pitch and Gavardiol and Fafana as kind of a back two, this is our best 11 in terms of actual footballer ability that we can have on the pitch at once. Oh my word. Calvert-Lewin to Adiemi, who smashes it into the top corner. An instant impact for Calvert-Lewin. Brought on off the bench. Some would argue in a panic. After half an hour played. I feel like that's a Mourinho-esque move. Livramento playing out of position today as well. Involved in the build-up play. calvert pulls it across. But this finish into the top corner by Adiemi is absolutely sensational. You're not going to see a better finish than that today. That was crazy. I suppose the question now is, how defensively solid are we going to be with this back two? Oh my word, that was a crunching tackle. And it nearly went over the line. We're fine. I think, Adiemi, Calvert-Lewin. Could we catch them on the break here? The bad pass to Ramsdale nearly ended up in the back of the net, and I wonder if that's what the highlight was that we've just been shown there. It was the highlight. And now, oh, Gvardiol is now injured. Ah, right, Johansson's going to have to come in. Of course, tomorrow he would be useful to be able to put back on the pitch now. I mean, that's another injury to a left-sided defender. It's a bit of a concern, I'll, I'll be honest. It could get more concerning. If they now score before half-time, panic mode might set in here. We've now used two subs, and there's an entire 45 minutes left here, plus the remainder of this half, which we may still need to do some defending in. Fafana heads it away. A goal here for Liverpool could be a really critical, critical time to score right before half-time. Ball down this far side. It's crossed in. Rafa Leal's effort's blocked. I think that was by Mbappé, and then it's hooked away from danger. Gonna just shout some encouragement from the sideline. And as I shout encouragement, another highlight begins. Maybe I shouldn't have encouraged them. Oh my word. It's not gone over the line. We're fine. I mean, Salah probably should have scored the header there. It's fine. It's still 2 1. Everyone breathe. We'll take this at the break. Oh my word. This was not meant to be this intense. This was not meant to be this stressful. We are 2 1 up at Anfield. We've not really done enough in this game. Like, after we scored, not a lot happened going forward for us, which has to concern me a little. Livramento's on a bucking as well. Under other circumstances, I might be looking to take him off now, but I really can't afford to do that with our current situation. Also, you know what? We're crowding out the middle a little bit more. I'm going to go to a narrower style of play. Try and boss the centre of the midfield a little bit more. Havertz, Calvert-Lewin. I mean, if we get the next goal, that will help me relax. Demir skips over his man, goes on his own. Alisson, good stop. Demir, almost a sensational goal. But yeah, I've changed things to go narrower here, just because they're playing with kind of a three-man midfield. Obviously, we've got Bellingham, Demir, Havertz. That's the referee. <laughs> Rice, I back this four-man midfield to boss the game through the middle. Because of how white, kind of weak we're looking at wing-back, I feel like it makes sense to try and focus the play through the middle a little bit more. Calvert-Lewin, oh my word, he should have scored that. He should have scored that. It wasn't offside either. Okay, let's see if we can try and put a hole through the middle of this Liverpool midfield. Try and get a third goal on the night that really would just give us a bit of breathing room. It's been a quiet half so far. Firmino is surely offside. He scores. The linesman's flags up. I am just hoping that this is going to be given. I think it has to be. 
right? He looked really far off when the ball was played. We're going to VAR. The goal is going to be disallowed. We can breathe a sigh of relief. But yeah, he, look, he did look a long way offside. He was a long way offside. Yeah, okay, that, that's fine. If he'd somehow been onside there, I would have been livid with that marking. But as things stand, it's fine. We retain our goal lead. And well, now we have a chance. Calvert-Lewin, free header. Allison saves it. Calvert-Lewin gets to the rebound, but just can't find an angle to shoot. So keeps the ball alive with Liveramento. Now with Havertz, edge of the box. He tries to shoot from range. It's blocked. Johansson, Bellingham, Fafana. We're knocking the ball around with some confidence. I feel like we've grown into this game. Liverpool look sharper to begin with. Maybe one more chance here. Ball searching cross to the back post, but Calvert-Lewin can't get there. And I have a sneaking suspicion we've seen the highlight, but I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. Bellingham's onside. He chips the goalkeeper, and I am wrong. And I'm delighted to be wrong. It's 3-1. We have changed things up in this game. We've changed the game plan, tactically tweaked some stuff, stuck to our guns. And it's worked out really nicely. Just crowding out the middle, trying to focus the play through the middle a little bit more. That is not our brand of football. It's a delightful finish by Jude Bellingham, who is carrying a knock. There is a temptation to take him off now with a two-goal cushion. And you know what? I'm going to do it. I don't want to aggravate that injury. We're going to bring in Zakaria, who's pretty good defensively. Mane coming on for Liverpool up top. They have to score two goals in the last 10 minutes here. We just need to see out this game. I think I'm going to switch to positive as well, just to try and hold on to the ball and maybe not risk as many men going forward. Bit of unconvincing defending there, but we've done a job. It's now with Robertson, who's bringing the ball forward. Another left back with an injury, by the way. Oh, my word. That's a goal. That's a goal. Odegaard shot this. Did this hit the woodwork or did Ramsdale save this? The way it's hit the woodwork or been saved and fallen straight to Firmino is so fortunate. So fortunate. Maybe I've switched to positive too late here, but we're going to start to time waste as well. We've got 10 minutes to see out at Anfield and we're straight into another highlight. I can't handle this football manager. Stop it. Calvert-Lewin wins those headers. Adiemi takes it down. Can he take it around the keeper? He can. I think he's onside here. I'm very confident he's onside. So much so, I'm going to celebrate it. And if it now gets ruled out, I look like an idiot. I think we've just responded straight from kickoff. If there was any risk of any nerves coming in for the last 10 minutes, we've alleviated those nerves. Really nice build-up play. Calvert-Lewin, you back him to win those kind of headers in the air. He's done just that. Adiemi knew what the game plan was. He was already on the shoulder of his man. Tucks it away. I mean, Adiemi's bloody good, isn't he? Adiemi's good. He scored a hat-trick here at Anfield in a Champions League quarter-final. And we needed a response. We have found a response. This has been a crazy match. So many highlights. So many twists and turns. I mean, it could <laughs> yet have another one. Ansu Fati probably should hit the target there. Although with 45 seconds remaining, you have to imagine this is done now, right? Ramsdale, you can do a bit of time-wasting here. You don't need to rush it. This is a game that we might look at as a turning point in our season. I'm hoping now we can build a little bit of momentum off it. Given the fact we've won it, I'm not going to worry about the FA Cup final against Manchester United, or rather the semi-final against Manchester United. We're going to come back next time for a Champions League semi-final. Oh, what a win this is at Anfield, though. Not convincing. We tactically changed a few bits, and I think it actually worked really, really well. Um, in the end, Calvert-Lewin had such a profound impact on this game on off the bench after 30 minutes. Sometimes all it takes is a few panic changes that work out to feel good about yourself. Elsewhere, Mbappe firing Real Madrid through to the next round against Villarreal. Bellingham's out for a few days. Gvardiol is out for two to four weeks. That's a concern. Hmm, that is a pretty... That's really not good. Because Luca Dean also plays the left centre-back position and would be his natural cover. I mean, it's a very unfortunate set of injuries all happening in one part of the pitch. Additionally, a handful of players need a rest. Bloody hell. So looking forward to next time. It's a Champions League semi-final. It will be against Manchester United or Bayern. We don't know who we're going to be taking on yet. Although, in their first leg, uh, Manchester United won 3-0. So we're probably going to be coming back for a game against Manchester United anyway. That's another reason not, not to do the FA Cup semi-final. Who would want to see me play Manchester UFC three times in an episode? Not me. Not tomorrow. Not ever. 
Anyway, I'm going to go away and try and mentally reset. What a crazy episode today, but I feel like the tactical tweaks we did worked great. Slightly concerning on the injury front, slightly concerning on the league form front as well. Between next time and now, we've got games against Manchester United, Tottenham and Brentford. Hopefully we'll come back passing those games with flying colours. Hopefully we'll still be top of the Premier League. Well, hopefully I'll see your faces then. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. This was a bit of a classic. I enjoyed this a lot. I'll see you soon. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you all next time. I'm out.